and welcome to Tech Talk. I'm your host, Seth Miller, and today we're talking low-profile antennas with FinCom CTO Bill Milroy. Bill, welcome to the show. Thanks, Seth. Great to be with you. So when we talk low-profile antennas, it's important to put some numbers on that, and I think four inches is about the right place to be. So give us a little bit of an idea of the difference between the antennas that are below four inches in profile versus above. Sure. So at four inches, I think really anything under four inches, we're talking about a, a phased array. So that could be uh, an electronically scanned array, it could be a VIX array, but something that stays low profile, conformal to the radome. In contrast, the, uh, what we'll call high profile antennas would be things that, antennas that are maybe 8, 10, in some cases 12 inches tall, and each of them has their own characteristics. So then what are some of the pros and cons about using these low profile antennas on an aircraft? Sure, I, I guess I'll start with the cons. The, the main one was the gain roll off. So all phased arrays suffer some amount of gain roll off. By that I mean the, a reduction in gain with larger scan angles, lower elevation angles, and those are the lower elevation angles, the lower satellite angles you would see at the higher and lower latitudes in terms of far away from the equator. And those can limit overall performance. Some, some can only get to 30 degrees, some can get to 20, some can get, get to 10. And then depending on the technology you're talking about, there's other issues. There could be there's area efficiency. Obviously everybody wants for given the intent to be as small as possible but have as high as gain as possible. Polarization purity, side low control, these are all characteristics that distinguish within the phased array domain the different technologies. All right, and then so what are some of the advantages that they bring to the table? Okay, on the advantage side, obviously there's the low profile. So low profile intuitively is a good thing. So lower drag, uh, it can go into lower profile radome, less bird strike uh, issues. And then the other big issue is in terms of skew angle performance. By that I mean the ability to work very efficiently even at low latitudes, i.e. near the equator. All right, so skew angle and working in the equatorial regions. This is often seen as a very complicated and confusing task. Can you give us a, the easy version of what skew angle is and try to make it clear to us? Sure, I'll give it my best shot. Higher profile antennas uh, that have an aspect ratio to them, they generally have a beam that's elliptical shape. It could be four or five to one higher than it is wide. So at low skew angles with, that you'd get at higher latitudes far away from the equator, that's not a big deal because the satellite plane is generally oriented towards the narrow part so that your beam is not hitting any of the adjacent satellites. However, invariably, with the higher profile antennas, as you move closer and closer to the equator, that orientation of that ellipse changes. And at some point, it begins to impinge on the adjacent satellites that you're not supposed to hit. And that's not good for two really important reasons. So one is that on the receive side, you are effectively jammed by those adjacent satellites. So that means your performance, your spectral efficiency, all the metrics that, that are really important for the antenna begin to degrade. And then on the transmit side, there's actually regulatory requirements to say, hey, if you're impinging at all on these adjacent satellites, you need to use more bandwidth, you need to drop your efficiency, you need to drop the performance of your system. Now, in contrast, a low-profile phased array uh, has this nice characteristic to it in that its, it's beam was generally circular. And so a circular beam, you don't really care what the orientation is. So even on the equator, even uh, uh, where you would be operating at high skew angles, it's not a problem because you're still not impinging on those adjacent satellites. Great. Um, one of the other main negatives you brought up is drag. Um, mm -hmm. And talk a little bit about what that means in terms of fuel and how you're able to measure the cost of flying these higher profile versus lower profile radomes. Sure, it's not something you can unfortunately measure with a scale. Uh, but the way it's done typically is you do what's called a CFD, which is a, a computational fluid dynamic analysis. And that comes all, you get uh, lines, you figure out vacuum, you figure out whether there's going to be ice and so on and so forth. But the main metric that comes out of that is the lateral drag. So that's a number in pounds. So that number could be 10 pounds, it could be as high as 75 pounds over the range of antennas you see today on IFEC. So that number gets multiplied by the lift to drag ratio of the aircraft, that's say 15 for a typical aircraft at cruise, and that gives you what the total effective weight is. And that weight is extra weight you got to carry and more fuel you have to burn. So for example, let's say we have two different antennas, a phased array that's low profile and a higher profile antenna. Let's say that they differ by 30 pound uh, drag. It could be more than that. We multiply that by the lift to drag ratio and that's 450 pound difference. And so that's a lot of fuel. Whether that's a lot of money or a little bit of money, it's definitely uh, fuel money. And we've, we're finding more and more that the airlines care about that because that's a recurring cost or recurring savings year after year. All right, and so, I mean, we're talking about 450 pound difference and obviously it can vary across the different types of antennas and radomes and airplanes and there's a lot of variables there. But is this something that can truly be measured? 
is this something that you can demonstrate and sort of put a, a number mm -hmm. on a piece of paper and say this matters? Well, as I, as I mentioned, it's not unfortunately not something you can measure with a scale. However, the airlines have different perceptions on this. I'll use Delta as an example. They're very proud of their fuel computations and fuel estimates. And they claim that even when a small antenna, much smaller than the IFEC antennas we're talking about, are added to a plane, they can see that in terms of added fuel consumption. And so obviously that's something they care about. I'll give you the other contrast. What we hear from Lufthansa that flies some large uh, radomes on 747s, they claim that they can't see the difference. So who's right, I don't really know. It's all about the perception of the airline. But I think the trend is, particularly if fuel prices now and as fuel prices get more expensive, is it's becoming a bigger and bigger deal of the airlines. And I think it's more and more valued, this low drag uh, fuel, uh, uh, low fuel consumption. So that's a great explanation of how this applies to airlines, a topic that's sort of near and dear to both mm -hmm. of our hearts. But give me a little bit of information. Where else does this apply? Sure. Well, the first one that comes to mind would might be the rail industry. So that could be Europe and Asia with their high-speed trains. So in Europe, that's low profile, very much like the aeronautical, because you want low drag, you're worried about birds hitting it, so on so forth. But in the United States, it's really, you know, where we don't have as many high-speed trains, it's actually about tunnel clearance, which you wouldn't really think of. Generally, in the United States, what we're finding is they want those antennas to be no higher than four inches just so that they can fit under the tunnels, and obviously that's a pretty important parameter. Another area is maritime. So traditionally, maritime, particularly larger yachts, have used two or four of these large, you know, spherical radomes that everyone's seen. But the trend now in the yacht market is they don't like those so much. They want something that's more aesthetically pleasing, and so what they're moving to is low-profile phased arrays. Who is making these antennas today, and what's the future look like in terms of being able to deliver them onto aircraft, marine, trains, et cetera? Well, as far as I know, in terms of phased arrays on aircraft, uh, we're the only ones doing that today. But I have to tell you that there are a lot of smart people working on the electronically scanned arrays, the active and passive ones. So we'll just have to wait and see uh, between all the trade spaces we talked about, the ability to work at low elevation angles, the efficiency, the area efficiency, the polarization control, and so on and so forth. These are all trades that will come back and forth, and we'll have to see how things evolve. Great. Thanks so much. And that's all for today on Tech Talk. Join us again for our next episode, coming soon.